the rich young man lived 2,000 years ago, and we've never discovered what his name is. But from the gospel we just heard, we realized he was quite a good young man, had a bright future ahead of him. But sadly, when that opportunity came, when Jesus put to him a wonderful challenge and invitation, as it says in the gospel, he walked away sad because he was too attached to his possessions. Whenever I hear the story of the rich young man, I think about another rich young man who lived about 800 years ago, and his statue is all the way over there in the far corner. It's the statue of St. Francis of Assisi. And as you know, our parish has very deep Franciscan roots. He's really a wonderful young man who got the same invitation. Jesus spoke to his heart, and St. Francis decided to give up everything. As he described, he fell in love with Lady Poverty and then followed Jesus completely by shedding all of his material goods. But I wanted to speak with you about uh, a third young man, one who lived a uh, contemporary of ours, and he grew up in this area, and like the other two we just mentioned, he had a, a good life, things were going along well, and he went to school, and after school he got a job on the stock exchange in New York, and from there he got a job on the stock exchange out in California, and living there in San Francisco, the city of St. Francis, he met someone when he was young who gave him this little book called My Name is Francis. And in reading this little book, he was very intrigued by the life of St. Francis, and living there, he thought, hmm, could I do what Francis did? Can I take up that challenge? Can I feel, find that joy that Francis found in, in giving up everything? So he quit his job on the exchange. He then went to the closet in his apartment, and he gathered all of his worldly belongings, and he put them in these two really big bags. He had all the nice tweed jackets, the silk ties, the cotton shirts. And he put it all there and he went down to the park where the homeless are. And he used to know them because of the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And he gave his packages to this homeless man. It was like a bonanza for him, these two big bags. And the homeless man looked at him and said, are you sure? Do you know what you're doing? He said, I've never been so sure and all of my life. And he gave everything away, and he started to follow Jesus. And then that journey took him back over here to the East Coast, then into Europe, and then finally here to Wyckoff in these little shoes as your pastor. It was 38 years ago that Jesus called me in the city of San Francisco to leave everything, and it's been an incredible joy. So the first point of my homily is that I do believe that God is still calling us. Like he could be calling you, Jack. He'd be calling any other young person here, maybe to this challenge, saying, I want you to give up all things, give up all these material attachments of our world, and come follow me. And I would hope that as a parish, we would always be there to support young people who may be called to that radical detachment from material goods. But the second point of my homily is that that is not for everyone. Clearly, God is not calling all of us to that type of level of detachment, right? It's a good thing, it's a good point that he's making, but we have to apply the main word of today's first reading. And the main word of today's first reading is prudence, right? Each one of us prudently has to figure out how we're going to apply Jesus's message, okay? We have to do that. For example, if someone is a married man, a wife, children, well, he's got to feed them, clothe them, educate them. He can't say, well, honey, I'm giving up everything and I'm going to go join the Franciscans, right? Well, first of all, the Franciscans won't accept you, right? Because that's being completely irresponsible and shirking your duties. But it doesn't mean that he's not called to let go of certain material possessions. When I gave a similar homily like this at Sacred Heart a number of years ago, one of my friends was like, 
you got to make sure my wife hears this homily because she has 60 pairs of shoes. I was like, 60 pairs of shoes? Like, who has 60 pairs of shoes? I was blown away by that. And then I thought a little bit more. I said, yeah, okay, you're criticizing your wife, but like, I know you have three cars, you know? So it's like, uh, you know, maybe we could give up both of these things. But so each one of us in our own life called to let go, unweight, get rid of those possessions that may be holding us down, tying us down. So my third um, and final point uh, it comes from a concept that I did not realize was so popular. Um, but you know, oftentimes we speak about downsizing. When a couple finally raises their children and the children leave the nest, they become empty nesters. People often think about kind of downsizing. But there's another concept, and maybe some of you have heard of it. It's called Swedish death cleaning. Swedish death cleaning. And the whole idea is that as you realize that you're entering the final chapters of life, so as not to be a burden upon your children when you finally go home to God, you start now cleansing, purging. So if there's something really beautiful and meaningful, maybe you give it to your daughter, your granddaughter, maybe a beautiful piece of jewelry or something. Or if there's clothing that you're not wearing anymore, maybe you donate it to a good cause or you sell it and give that money to an institution, an organization that needs something like that. Whatever it may be, but we try to cleanse ourselves of those things, try to prepare ourselves for our entry into everlasting life. So I want to end with just a brief phrase from today's second reading where it says that the word of God penetrates into the human heart. And I want to invite all of us during this week to allow the spirit of God to penetrate our hearts, to ask us, are there any things that I'm overly attached to are there things that I need to let go of? Are there things that I have that could better serve other people that are in need? You know, because the reality is, as that expression goes, there are no pockets in the burial shroud, right? You never see a U-Haul truck following a hearst to a cemetery, right? We can't take it with us. So let the Holy Spirit, hey Lord, what do I have to let go of? What are those things that are maybe holding me back that are not allowing me to focus entirely on you? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.